independent film studio Blumhouse Productions found itself in a bit of a pickle in August of 2019. That month, there were a pair of mass shootings in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio, causing Universal Pictures to indefinitely postpone the release of Blumhouse's latest movie, The Hunt. So what exactly is The Hunt? It's a horror movie that's also a parody of our current political climate. A bunch of young, wealthy city liberals gather together to hunt down and kill a group of 11 deplorables, aka conservatives, that are dropped off in a field and given a modest supply of weapons with which to defend themselves. So if you're wondering why that premise is in any way controversial, I don't really know what to tell you. Time will tell whether pulling the movie from its scheduled release was the right decision, but the movie was eventually put back on track to hit theaters in mid-March of this year. Well, fate had other plans and the world was put on pause due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Universal then made a surprisingly business savvy decision prior to release and started putting their movies out on digital platforms. See my previous review of The Invisible Man if you haven't already. This delay also allowed Universal and Blumhouse to change the marketing for the film without actually removing a single frame. The new poster said, the most talked about movie of the year is one that no one's actually seen. Films about humans hunting other humans for sport have been scattered throughout cinematic history, and The Hunt tries desperately to balance that very specific niche genre with a heavy dose of parody. The results are somewhat of a mixed bag, with plenty of blood, gore, guns, and twists. The horror elements work well enough, and it ratcheted up just enough tension to keep me interested for a lean 90 minutes. People are shot, stabbed, and exploded in all manner of creative ways, and the filmmakers clearly had fun with the script and material that were provided to them. In case it's not readily apparent so far, yes, the hunt is rated R, and it does its damnedest to milk every single ounce out of that rating. The script and the material are where the hunt comes up short. The dialogue struggles in setting up any of these characters, with basically zero backstory allotted to either side. I had very little clue about what motivates them to complain about their particular issues. Characters are exaggerated stereotypes. The liberals drink expensive champagne and complain about the way poor people vote. And the conservatives are Alabama bumpkins who record conspiracy theory podcasts and call people who disagree with them snowflakes. This shallow interpretation of the left-right divide in the political landscape has its heart in the right place, but doesn't give any sort of weight to the story it wants to tell. That's where the parody nature of the film falls short. You can make a good, even great movie that pokes fun at genre conventions. The Cabin in the Woods is a fantastic example of this type of movie done right. You can also make a clever movie, but sometimes you can make a movie that wants to be clever, but doesn't actually stick the landing. Successful horror comedies often kill off characters we love, but The Hunt didn't really give me anyone to care about. There's one individual that stands out as the chief protagonist, but the fate of this character only elicited a shrug and a chuckle for me at the very end. They did attempt to make this character have some depth and nuance, but it was extremely difficult to relate to someone whose backstory is paper thin at best. As it stands in its final form, the hunt just throws a bunch of characters that kind of suck, and the movie often fails to land its punches as a result. Another thing I need to talk about regarding The Hunt is its length. This movie seems to be missing about 15 to 20 minutes of either additional world building or, as I mentioned, additional character development. I'm a fan of writers and directors making a movie that isn't bloated with excess fat, but The Hunt takes minimalist cinema to an absurd level. It's not all sadness in the review though, and I believe that the overarching message is one that's relevant in today's world. Producer Jason Blum took a massive chance in getting this movie out the door at all, especially in today's political landscape. Blum, who is a self-professed Hollywood liberal, even went on conservative author Ben Shapiro's podcast to talk about the film and discuss his reasons for giving it the green light. That's a ballsy move, and he deserves a ton of credit for setting aside his political opinions to sit down with someone he fundamentally disagrees with. Despite its flaws, The Hunt is both a breath of fresh air and a mirror image of our current political climate. It doesn't browbeat the average viewer for their opinions, but it does say that it's okay to make fun of crazies at either end of the spectrum. The Hunt's decision not to take a side on the Democrats versus Republicans debate is smart, but there are people who will absolutely be offended by their portrayal on screen. Might I suggest that if you see this film and are offended by how it portrays you, 
congratulations on proving its point. Thank you so much for listening. If you like my content, please subscribe below and click the notification bell. You can also like, share, or comment below, and I will see you next time.